forget. Come on, if you really mean it, let's never forget. Amen. Church, on this final Sunday, this last day of 2023, God has given a short yet profound message for us all, individually and collectively, and I want to use this title for our time together today, and, and here it is. Amazingly, the singers have already been singing my sermon, and we did not talk. Don't look back. Don't look to your neighbor. You don't have to tell nobody anything. The word of the Lord is don't look back. So we are here, church, at this familiar point of transition, the end of one year going into the start of a new year. And uh, we've all had several different experiences this year. Say amen. We've had some ups and some downs. Who am I talking to? We've had some good days. We've had some hills to climb. We've had some weary days. We had some sleepless nights, but you made it. The word of the Lord is, but you made it. And only you and God knows what it took for you to get here. Only you and God know, watch this, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about what you went through to get here. Not the Facebook and the Instagram truth. That's a different truth. But only you and God know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But bless God, you made it. Would you put your hands together just to give God a round of applause? And I don't know about you, but my testimony is I am still here, and it is by the grace of God. Whose testimony is that? Would you give God praise? Come on, if you know it could have gone another way, would you give him some praise? If you know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, would you give him some praise? See, church, I only want to talk to someone who knows that it's just the song, but we flip the words of the song from it could have been me, but we say it should have been me but you made it and church I don't know when we're going to get this we'll get it one day but God based on the word really does make all things work together for he really does Romans 8 and 28 I know you got it highlighted in your Bible but it's time for the people of God to start to believe that God really does make all things work together for good to those who love the Lord do you love them on today and are the called according to his purpose. So if you dealt with tragedy or trouble this year, if you dealt with, watch this, triumph or victory this year, it's a thing. And God makes all things work together for good. So no thing is wasted. No good thing. No bad thing. No, no experience. It's a part of the package to get you here today. The disappointment is a thing. The frustration, the setup, the failure, the setback, and the comeback, that's a thing. And God makes all things work together for good. The bad relationship, that's a thing. The heartbreak, that's the thing. What the devil meant for evil, God says, I'll take that thing and turn around for your good too. Am I in a church still this morning? Somebody say, I made it. And so in our text, we, we eavesdrop on Jesus talking to the disciples about, watch this now, the end time. Because you know how the disciples were. They were asking questions of Jesus of when the kingdom would come. Now, I want to let you know that this type of talk is still common today, especially at times of transition like right now. The, remember the end of uh, 1999. There was so much. Anybody remember the end of 1999? Prince said, 2000 zero, zero. Party over, oops, out of time. So tonight I'm going to party. I got a bunch of holy fake people in the church. And many of you believe that I need to get my party on tonight for real now because if it ain't no more tomorrow, I'm going to give it all I got tonight. 
Then the tech industry came and said, well, listen, you might be partying all you want, but the algorithm is going to be all screwed up. We ain't going to know how to keep count of time when we go from the 1900s to the 2000s, and people didn't know what to do. Uh, are my bills going to be forgiven? Are we going to be confused about the time, confused about the date? So at the end of the year, this is common for people to start talking about and thinking about the end time, times of transition, especially when we have the manifestation of biblically-based end time indicators. War. Rumors of war. Famine. Pestilence. Father raising, rising up against son. Uh, weather that you cannot explain, it was probably 80 degrees about six days ago. And 30 yesterday. So as Jesus spoke to the disciples about the coming of the kingdom, out of nowhere, he stuck in this powerful phrase in verse 32. And it is, remember Lot's wife. The second shortest verse in the Bible. You all biblical scholars in here know the shortest verse is Jesus wept. So Jesus simply said, remember Lot's wife. Now this is profound. Why? Number one, because Jesus said it. Say amen. Number two, it's profound because it proves that you don't have to say a lot for something to be meaningful or powerful. Number three, it is profound because you don't have to have a lot said about you to have a great impact. Because I only recall two occasions when Jesus specifically told us to remember someone and look at your neighbor and say they were both women. You know your Bible. Number one, the woman who came with the alabaster box to anoint Jesus. Jesus said, this thing that this woman has done, always remember this as a memorial what she did unto me. And then the second one is outlined in our text, Lot's wife. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Now, you know, there's some women in the Bible who could have really had an attitude when he found out that's what, when they found out that's what Jesus said. I can imagine Eve saying, really? I mean, I'm the mother of all creation. I mean, either everything is my fault or to my credit. Really? Remember Lot's wife? What about Sarah who says, now look now, I popped out a baby at 90. But that ain't the miracle. My husband was 99. Remember Lot's wife? What about Deborah, the first judge of all of Israel? Really, Jesus? What about Esther? Esther went before the king, listen, risked her life to save all of the... She is a female version of Moses. Really, Jesus? Remember Lot's wife? Okay, how about this one? What about Mary, Jesus' mama? So that's what we're doing now? We forgetting me? A lot of women could have asked Jesus, really? Remember Lot's wife? Look at your neighbor and say, that's what he said. He specifically said, remember Lot's wife. So what do we know about her? You ready? Nearly nothing. Y'all give God praise for Minister Rachel. Let's give God praise. Keep the camera on me. What do we know about Lot's wife? We don't even know her name. The Bible only reference or refer to her as Lot's wife. But we do know this about her. When leaving Sodom and Gomorrah, she looked back after being told not to. That's Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. She looked back at the destruction behind her and instantly became a pillar of salt. Genesis 19, verse 26. And church, I stopped by to tell you, I won't be before you long. I stopped by to tell you, I believe Jesus told us to remember her because she looked back and got stuck. Stuck between where she was leaving and where she was going. Who am I talking to? 
she looked back at her attachment to the past was greater than her commitment to the future. Who am I talking to? She looked back because she wanted what was back then more than what she wanted God to have for her in the future. The word of the Lord for us today is don't look back. No, don't. It's a trap, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you today, you don't want to look back because you don't want to get stuck. Stuck where? Stuck in disappointment. Stuck in the offense. Some Christians are offended all the time and about everything. They are stuck. Stuck in failure. Stuck in unforgiveness. Stuck in discouragement. Stuck in disappointment. Stuck in anxiety. Stuck in sin. Stuck in issues. Stuck. And watch this. You can even be stuck in past successes or the good old days, but the Bible says your ladder shall be Come on, put your hands together, give God praise. If you ain't going to look back, and you ain't going to get stuck. Here's another reason why you don't want to look back. Because when you're no longer moving, everything around you is moving. It'll feel like you're really moving backwards. You are regressing and not progressing. Time is moving, but you are not. People's relationships, they're moving, but yours is not. Technology is moving, but your, you are not. Ministry is moving, but not you. But the Bible says, I haven't seen, nor ear heard. Come on, church. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the thing that God hath prepared. You won't see it looking back. So, saints, I want you to know that I do understand. I stand here just like you. I have a past. You have a past. Some good things, some bad things. I understand that life will have a habit of throwing things at us from every angle. And sometimes at the same time, the old folks used to say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Who am I talking to in here? So I heard somebody say, life be lifing. And it will throw things at you and have you thinking in your mind back to a time and a season, a space and a place where seemingly things were better. Do I have a witness in the house? God, let me, I'm telling you now, uh, life will make you stop to deal with the experiences that you have going on today. And you will start reminiscing about the past. Who knows what I'm talking about? Things just seemed like it was a little less complicated before I got in 11th grade. I mean, middle school was so much more easier. Young people, the old people saying the same thing. Man, it was different when I was single. How you say that? I'm your husband. <laughs> Things were different when I was a teenager. Your kids say, but, but you didn't have me. See, the devil will have you thinking of a time where it was seemingly better. Don't fall for the, look at your neighbor and say, don't fall for the trick. It's a trick. <laughs> Trying to live back then. Church, listen, there's a whole political movement based on some people's perception of past greater times. You know what I'm talking about, but let me drop this knowledge on you. That is selfish. Because it might have been good for you, but it does not take into account the perspective of somebody else. So when you say, I want to go back to the good old days, it was good for you, but might not have been good for me. A whole movement of people who are attached to the past have you never read. So church, let's consider the word of God for the example of how God made a promise to one man, Abram, and all of his descendants. And then watch this. You know what the promise was. God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless the fruit of your body. I'm going to bless the land. I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. This was the covenant that we are under today. God gave that promise to one man. Then we watch through the word of God that they became slaves. Then we see how God rescued them. Somebody say amen. He showed himself strong to all of these people. He showed them miracles, signs. He led them, watch this, through the wilderness. Say through. 
en route to the promised land as he prepared their hearts and grew their faith with life's lessons. God's promise and their journey, church, is just as applicable for us today as it was for the children of Israel in Bible days. And when God closed the Red Sea behind them, it was Moses who told them, now look, these Egyptians you see on the seashore, ye shall see again no more forever. Who am I talking to in here that realize that the door has been shut behind you? I don't know if there's another witness. Here's what I tell God. God, I know I'm going to continue to face an enemy, but how about not the old one? God, I know I might have some problems. Can I just get some new problems? I don't want the same enemy and the same problem over again. I know it might be some battles, but God, give me a new battle. I don't want to fight the same one. Church, listen, they weren't supposed to look back and neither are we. Why? Because God has always wanted his people to be on the move. Sister Angelica said, I'm moving forward. Somebody say forward. But listen to this now. You do know that when times got tough for the children of Israel, all that God did for them, they actually thought slavery in Egypt was better was better than going through the wilderness to the promised land. Let us never get to the point that we feel like life is so bad that we want to go back. For you have rescued my life, and I don't know if you made the declaration, I'm never going back. I don't care how good you thought you had it. Let me tell you something. I had a lot of hair and a mustache. I was a good-looking man. That's why you got to get your bride early. I got her now. So ain't no need me looking back to yesteryear. I'm already married. But some of you so obsessed with the way you used to be. Listen, your body might not ever get like that again. Listen, I ain't mad at you. Keep on working at it. getting on the scale talking about the devil is a liar. The devil is not a liar. He ain't got nothing to do with that. Let us never get so fooled that we think things were better back then. Come on, somebody to put your hands again and say, I ain't never going back. I ain't never going back. Ooh, God brought me out of that thing. Here's what they said. They said, let us make us a captain. Let us make us a captain who would lead us back. Are you, church, are you? Church, listen, we can't start thinking about yesterday too much. It'll have you longing for the last place you thought you had it good, and you will end up accepting the suffering that comes with it. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord make thee rich and he add not a piece of sorrow to it. The devil will have you fooling yourself. Anybody know somebody who went back to an abusive relationship? You mean to tell me you got out and went back? But he was so good to me, but he's not good for you. Ooh, the church done got quiet. You know anybody who went back to a toxic friendship? You said, me and her, I'm done with it. Next thing you know, you still in her face. You went back. But everybody, everybody look straight ahead. Sit, look straight ahead. Here's what the problem is. You are obsessed with the memory of a few good times. But you forgot about all the drama. People will return to a job where the people abuse you. They marginalize you. They undervalued you. And here you talking about, yeah, but the pay higher. And so was your high blood pressure. The benefits were good. And so was your A1C number. And so is your stress level. Ever thought about that? They were killing you over there. Somebody say, I ain't going back. Come on, tell them again. I ain't going back. 
Ecclesiastes, I'm having so much fun. Chapter 7, verse 10 says, Say not thou, what is the, listen to what the wisdom says. This is Solomon. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these. Here's what he said. For thou dost not inquire why. This is not a smart thing to do. It's not even smart for you to start asking if it was better back then. Church, somebody fooled us and told us that hindsight was 2020 vision. We say it all the time. Yeah, my behindsight or hindsight is 20. No, sir, no, ma'am. There are some things that you went through, some things that happened in your past. You can turn around, look at it, and you still don't know why it happened. You still have no clarity. You still, what, tell, what did I do? What did I say? What did I eat? Listen, if I knew exactly how I got a cold, I promise you I would not have done it. So hindsight 2020, somebody told you a lie. But I'm so glad that the old saints used to sing, Father alone, we, we will know all about it. Father alone, we will understand why. But we're going to go forward. Put your hands together if you're going forward. Listen, this is just as much individually as it is collectively. Say, I'm going forward. Matthew chapter 4 gives us the chronicle of Peter who got up out of that boat. Y'all know this story. The Bible says Peter got out of the boat and started walking safely on the water unto Jesus. But when the water and the waves came against him, listen, you can say what you want to say about Peter saying he didn't have enough faith and you can't even swim. But he started walking on that water, and when the wind and the waves started coming, Peter did not look back. The rest of the disciples might have been calling him by name. Peter, what are you? Peter said, you know what? I know one thing. I don't know what I'm doing. I might not know where I'm going, but I know who I'm following. Peter did not. Who am I talking to in here today? The weather has gotten really bad in your life. Things have turned for the much worse. It's dark out there. It's windy out there. But somebody said, but I ain't looking back. I got trouble on top of trouble. I've got bills on top of bills. But I ain't looking back because I ain't going back. Somebody say amen. amen. Peter probably said, I might sink. But I'm going to stay right here. Jesus is going to have to just come save me where I'm at. But I ain't looking back because I ain't going back. I'm stepping out on faith. I'm moving forward because the promise and the purpose of God is that way. Look at somebody say, it's that way. Come on, tell them it's that way. So I don't know who, 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 who's going to subscribe to this on the day and make a declaration that you're letting go of the past. Is there a witness in the house? Say, I'm letting go of the past. Watch this. Some of that is good. And some of that is bad. Say, I'm letting it go. I'm going to believe God again. I'm going to hope God, hope again. I'm going to pray again. I'm going to confess again because I'm not looking back. The old folks used to sing the types of songs. I, I promise you, in 2024, I might just start breaking out a hymn book. But the song says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. So listen, if you love Jesus, somebody say, I love Jesus. No, I, 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 I need you to say it like you mean to say, I love, I love Jesus. Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Now, if your neighbor didn't say it, say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Church, I'm going to close and get out of the way because it's not good that I'm starting to sweat. It's not for me. But let me tell you this, and I want to encourage you, and I will be done in five minutes. Say five minutes. If Jesus is, you just said you loved him. If Jesus is to you the same yesterday, today, and forever, then why are you even obsessed with yesterday's Jesus? If he was good back then, then he's good today. And if he's good today, he'd be good tomorrow. Ty Tripper said, if he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now, same God back then. 
There are numerous accounts of scriptures to encourage the people of God. Paul says, forgetting, listen to this language, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting the things in people that are behind and reaching forth into the things which are before. He says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. You can place off because I want their hearts to be stirred with the commitment and the declaration that what's to come is way, even if you don't know it all, what's to come is better than what's been. That was Paul. What did he say? Forgetting those things which are behind? I pressed toward the mark. Listen, whatever that prize might be, wherever it may be, we know one thing, it's not behind you. We know that for a fact. But that was New Testament. Watch what Isaiah said in the Old Testament. Remember not the former things. Did he not say the same thing? But watch what he said to the prophet. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing in you. And somebody is looking for a new thing in their life. We don't have to have a New Year's Eve service for you to decide that you're going to do some things differently. We preach in this church that today, any day, January through December can be a new year for you. You can decide today that I'm going to do some things differently. And it does not mean, please hear my heart, it does not mean you let go of all the wonderful things that God has done. In the Old Testament, when someone had a mighty encounter with God, here's what the Bible says they did. They built an altar, gave God a new name, and kept it moving. Hey, now you're Jira. Keep on going. Every time he showed himself strong, they built an altar, they worshiped, and they kept it moving. So I understand that we're in a church, and a lot of the things that gets the church up, uh, excited and in an uproar is when I think of the goodness of Jesus. Ooh, if, you, if you even struggle with the gift of exhortation, just get up and grab the mic and say, when, when I think of the goodness, I'm not being funny. I'm just telling you the thing that draws the response out of people. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of it and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. But that's what? I don't need to think of his goodness. There's another song I like, and it is, I just want to praise you. I just want to. I don't have to think of his goodness. I don't have to have a new car. Why are you praising him? I just want to. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. I just want to praise you. I don't have to think of the goodness and how he brought me out. I, right now, I just want to praise you. And we've got to get ourselves in the mindset that we receive the fact that there is a good reason why the windshield of a car is much larger than the rear view mirror. Give it some thought. There's, both of them are glass. But there's a reason why the windshield is so much broader, so much wider than the rear view mirror. Because you ain't going no place safe looking back. Hey, thank you so much for watching this sermon. I really appreciate you being a part of our service on today. But listen, you don't have to stop there. Subscribe to this channel so you can know when we upload content or when we go live. Also, you can come and join us live at Victory Church at any time. Meet us at 11 a.m. right here at The V. And finally, please share this sermon with a friend. That way you help us spread the gospel to a dying world. Thanks again for watching and God bless you.